Hello and welcome to what is a Press Start Australia Let's Play. Uh, today we're doing a special preview of Tomb Raider. Shannon is the man behind the controller. Uh, Shannon, walk us through. You're playing Rise of the Tomb Raider here. What are you doing at the moment other than freezing your ass off in this snowy <laughs> environment? So basically this is the first giant hub of the game. It's the Soviet installation and basically we've just completed our first side mission in the area. We're trying to find our lockpick and we're about to return to this mystery guy that is about to give it to us. Maybe so, so to detail these hub worlds prisoner. for a little, a little bit more, what, what do they involve, how many are there, that sort of thing? So basically this is quite early in the game and you are given the option to sort of upgrade all of your skills, explore tombs, find relics, or you can just go straight through to your next story mission. Sure, so, so, th so this is where the game sort of really expands out of it and gives you more sort of side missions, stuff like that, is that right? For sure, basically it is told that you should spend some time upgrading your skill set because as the game does get more difficult, if you do just zoom straight past this, it will be more of a challenge. You might like that, you might not. Sure, so how, how does that levelling progression system work then? Um, basically you get XP from anything to killing people, hunting animals, or finding relics, it's and done. then you use those points so to upgrade different skill sets don't have much to spare. and weapons. If you're fighting with this, sure, and so NPCs this. like this one are where you sort of get missions like that. Is, that, is that right? For sure, so this is a side mission, it's completely optional. I don't believe these were in the first game at all, but it no, appears that there's going to be a few of these per hub, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I believe even getting this lockpick is completely optional. You don't have to do it to progress through the game. It'll just give you different things like that pistol part. Right, okay, okay. And so, and then you're at a base camp here, and then this is where you sort of upgrade stuff based on the parts you collect. Is that, that how it works in this Correct. game? Much so like I it did believe looks? skills are pretty much identical to how they were in the last game. You've got three different... I told him I was a man yeah, of skill sets that relate weapons. to different things, and then you've got three different tiers based on how many you unlock right per tier. Mm -hmm. and, and do you feel like they bison. they do kind of contribute to, to Lara's character in a, in a sufficient amount? Trying. You know, sometimes with these skills can be rather minor, but uh, you feel like you're sort of really developing as a character? Yeah. Uh, look, half half, I guess. If you want to sort of focus on collecting That's everything, so then there's certain skills for that, and then there's certain skills that sort of will help you take less damage and that type of thing. Sure, and you can obviously sort of target it to where to suit your play style. So exactly. if you're a bit more of a gunslinger, you can start throwing it towards his pistols or whatever. For right? sure. Cool, cool. And, and and how often, how early into the game do you do you get a gun and do you get involved in that combat? Because I remember in the first game, it was a fair wee while before you picked up uh, something a bit heavier than a than a bow and bow and arrow. Yeah, um, for sure. You get straight into the combat this time around. Is, is that yeah, you still start with your trusty bow and arrow, but you get. A variety of guns quite early in the game, which is great. Sure. Well, she's obviously done all her killing and, and learnt her experience. She's and... a professional killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you were shooting at some some rabbits just a second there. Um, is hunting kind of an aspect to this as well? Is that how you sort of gather resources to upgrade yeah, some of the stuff massive. you got? Yeah, it's I believe you need to, to hunt to upgrade your weapons. So different animal skins will let you upgrade different different weapons. So it's definitely essential. Sure, sure. So drawing some inspiration from Far Cry 4 a little bit, maybe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and there's a fair few animals around. I see I see a deer now as well. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's even more than what you see in this screen, even in this region. So the weather is dynamic in Rise of the Tomb Raider, so different right. animals will come out at different different day and night time and different, we uh, different weather. Damn, that's periods, quite impressive. Yeah, it is. It just and, changes seamlessly as well. Sure, and and of the environments that you've experienced so far, what what do you, what can you say about those? Is there some nice sort of variety in the environments and uh, and whatnot? Very much so. Um, yeah, already in this first few hours, you've gone from, I guess, ice and snow to to desert, quite type areas. And like I said, day and night definitely play a huge part. So there's a huge variety of areas. Sure. So, how, how, do the, how does the day-night cycle affect it? Um, I guess, sort of, it doesn't affect what you're seeing too much, but I guess how you explore, obviously it's a lot easier during this type of environment than what it was if it was a bit darker. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, so, the, the pulse that you sent out before, um, I seem to remember that in the first game, I can't quite recall what it was, what it was called, um, yep. but that highlighted a whole bunch of things available in the area. Yeah, so um, survival instinct's definitely more important than this, just with the breadth of things that you have to explore and find, it definitely helps a lot. 
Yeah, and that highlights them all for you. And we're looking at the map now as well. Do you want to walk us through some of what's some of what's going on here and, and what yeah, this is sure. all about? Yeah, for sure. So starting with Tombs, I guess being Tomb Raider, they play an even bigger part in this game. And then you've got side missions. And then Challenges is a really cool new thing where they're just little things like getting a certain number of headshots or destroying certain things, and they just help you with more XP. Right. And then you've got just a bunch of relics and other collectibles to find, which you can see there's a ton. Yeah, no worries. Um, so the, those challenges then, are, are they made known to you or is it just a matter of trying to figure out what they are? They are. You can actually go into that challenge section and find out what they are or you can just come across them and it'll give you a little pop-up saying sure, right. one and 10 completed. Those are the, um, the tabs up the top there that you're flicking through with the bumpers. They are, yes. Okay, cool. And so the story progression then, how does that work in relation to these hub areas? Are there kind of like one or two sort of story missions per hub area and then you can sort of op- it opens you up to the rest of it or how does that work? Um, not really. So you've got side missions which seem to be almost completely unrelated to the main story or you can just shoot straight through these hub areas to your main mission. Mm-hmm. which will almost, from what I can tell, take you straight out of this hub area onto the next one, I guess. Sure, sure. Um, just in terms of the, the presentation so far, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed uh, from what we've seen in terms of some of the buildings and, and some of the nature surrounding you, this nice sort of snowy environment. Yep. Uh, how impressed have you been with the way the game looks so far? Very much so. There just seems to be a massive variety of things to climb and areas to explore. Like, just in this area alone, you can see a number of different fences, I guess you're looking at a crane with a logger tattoo to it right now. There just seems to be a ton of cool stuff. Yeah, and quite a lot of verticality too. I mean, for sure, you're, you're descending down now. Exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. It's quite a. So this this is the tomb we're entering now. Yeah. yeah, and that's one of those challenges you just saw there, exploring five caves. We've just found our fourth. Right. I get you. So that's five caves within this one area. Correct. Yeah. Man, what sort of creepy crawlies lurk in those depths? I wonder. <laughs> Um, it, it's quite, quite getting quite dark and sinister now. I, the music's kind of giving me some sort of Skyrim vibes. Very much. Um, was that something? Yeah, something you picked up on? It was a, a bit sort of spooky and at times. Ah, uh, for sure. Audio cues have always played a massive part in Tomb Raider, and they definitely play a massive part in this game below. as well. Yeah, and have we seen sort of like a, a supernatural game. element creep into it, like we we've seen in previous Tomb Raider games, or and not the yet. Uncharted it's, franchise? It's definitely looking like it might be going towards that way, but a coin. yeah, play an image of a city stamped uh, Yeah, I guess. So, so this coin here, <laughs> there's so much going on at once. <laughs> what, what what's going on with this coin? So basically, there will the be a basic collectible, and this then you can like zoom in and find a certain angle that will give you. I guess more XP and tell you a bit more about that item, which is cool. Right. Jeez, so much depth. There um, is. Seeing, seeing some of the, the climbing. How, in terms of the gameplay, how do, how do the mechanics feel? Is it all quite smooth here to operate and navigate yeah, around? For sure. It doesn't feel too different to the last game, which is good. A lot of people felt that it, it nailed that aspect quite well. So it feels familiar, but doesn't really feel too, I guess, repetitive or, or old. It definitely feels good. Yeah, and, and these these crates and pots you're busting open link <laughs> style at the moment. Um, they're they're also scavenge parts that go towards upgrading your guns and whatnot, much like Correct. it did in the first game. Yeah, you'll notice that straight away that there's so much stuff that you can sort of open up, which will give you XP and hold collectibles. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm 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 just gonna say it again. Like I'm just blown away by how much there is to to explore and do. Um, I remember in the first game, like I didn't feel much of a necessity to, to explore but certainly it looks like you, you're gonna have to this time around yeah um and we've just seen you die of course <laughs> my yep. my condolences um the death animation there wasn't quite as graphic as they were in the it's previous game the uh do they those graphic deaths still feature at all they're back in better than ever there's a lot of them they're Good. great Good. That's great to that's great to hear. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people that are a bit mixed on those just because how graphic they were. Oh, but, um, can dish out and you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, you, you nearly made it this time. Um, I guess I guess we're seeing some of the, the challenge elements here though of of the the tombs. Have you found them quite difficult so far? Um, I reckon they're just the right amount of sort of place on the difficulty scale. Um, yeah, they, they definitely take a few minutes to work out, but once you do, yeah, they're, they're definitely rewarding in that, that sense. Yeah, cool. That, that's perfect. That's, that's what you want from a challenge. Yeah, I guess the worry is that they might come repetitive later on, as they sort of did in the first game, but so far, so good. Okay, cool. And, and is there sort of like a good mix of 
of sort of physics uh, puzzles there as well. Like I remember in the first you had to play with fire a little bit to, to get where you wanted to go. Yeah, um, definitely okay. seems yep. to be that element as you'll see now, but then they've also added water and swimming, which is absent from the last Tomb Raider game, but right. quite prominent in earlier ones, so that's cool. Yeah, I bet that water is freezing. <laughs> uh, sweet, sweet. Um, so in terms of then sort of uh, wrapping up your, your thoughts on the game, because um, I know we're approaching the end of it here. We are. As how, how do you sort of feel so far? Was this something you're enjoying? Yeah, for sure. Definitely promising. It looks like they've advanced the series in quite a few areas, which is great. I had the fear that it might feel much of more of the same, but it doesn't at all. It feels great. Cool. And we'll hold off our final thoughts until it's review time. Uh, but be sure to look for that on Press Start Australia. Uh, when it eventually comes around soon after November 10th at the game's release. Uh, I've been Ewan. Thanks so much for walking us through it today, Shannon. No worries. And be sure to stick around because there'll be plenty more Tomb Raider to come. Until Enjoy. next time, happy gamers. Bye. Bye.